Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 4 of my Inter Miami series here on FM20. Now, today's episode, you can tell by the title, we're currently in our worst run of form so far on the series. Basically, we have not won a game. Well, we, sorry, let me rephrase that. We have not won an MLS game since the last episode. As you can see, we still currently find ourselves in the playoff spots only just. Uh, we haven't gained any points from the last episode. So, yeah, it's more just looking at the teams that have overtaken us and the teams that are now within touching distance of us as well. We are pretty close to falling out of the playoffs. We have to, we have to turn the, the form around here. Otherwise, we're going to be in big trouble. Another thing to mention, I had A- minus manager support, dropped down to a B plus, so that's a little bit scary, but I don't think, you know, panic, we're not going to panic yet, because, I mean, the board expectation was to basically not finish last and sort of consolidate ourselves in, in the conference. Anyway, today's opponents are going to be both Vancouver and, or well, the Vancouver Whitecaps and the Los Angeles Galaxy, obviously a pretty storied history with David Beckham and the Galaxy. I feel like it's a pretty fitting game to do on the episode today. Anyway, let's go over the recent fixtures. Of course, the last episode was the 4-1 victory against New York Red Bulls and the disappointing loss, which has pretty much been the catalyst for this bad run of form. We followed that up with a 2-0 away loss against Orlando City. As you can see, Luna, who scored two goals in the home game that we beat them 4-2 in, he scored again. He also gave away a penalty and, yeah, lost 2-0. We did bounce back, however, in the US Open Cup second round against a non-MLS team in the Long Island Rough Riders. Beat them 3-1, Chris Muller getting himself a hat-trick, and then, yeah, we managed to concede another goal which was pretty disappointing. We then went to Colorado Rapids. They beat us 2-1. As you can see, we actually opened the scoring through Mueller once again. He was, in pretty, he was in pretty good form, whereas the rest of the team was pretty dreadful. Uh, as you can see, Terrence Boyd and Danny Wilson getting the two goals there for Colorado. And Derek, the goalkeeper, had an 8.4 match rating. That's how badly we played. Anyway, the next game was a, another away game against Portland this time. Another 2-0 loss, similar to the Orlando game. Uh, they scored in the ninth minute, and then they got a goal on the stroke of halftime, which basically ruined any type of comeback that we were going to do. Uh, as you can see, Olusunde on a 6.4, Besla on a 6.2. I mean, there are a few other bad performers there. Parkhurst, whenever we play him, we just the defense just falls apart. He's got absolutely no pace to play any type of... Well, I mean, he's just passed it. He's, he's, he's basically going to retire at the end of the season as well, which is a great thing. Um, but again, the whole Tom, uh, Tommy Redding glitch, bug, whatever it is, has prevented us from having a, a solid defender. I could play him, but I don't want to because I feel like it could crash the file. And obviously, I don't really want to start from scratch again. Anyway, it's a bad loss. We moved on. Lost again, this time at home against the San Jose Earthquakes. 70, sorry, 76th minute winner from Akindele there. And um, yeah, I was, I was getting pretty pissed off at this point. I was really, I mean, that was three losses in a row and uh, I was quite upset. And the most recent game we just played was the US Open Cup third round against Nashville. And uh, yeah, we managed to win this one away from home, 2-1. Belalba opened the scoring for Nashville. And luckily, Mueller, who of course scored the hat-trick in the other cup game, uh, got us a goal back. And then Cisneros, back from injury, looking for you know some big performances from him, getting a goal three minutes later to put us into the fourth round, in which we'll take on the San Jose Earthquakes a little bit later on. Anyway, today's games, like I said, Vancouver up first at home, and then we're going to go to 
Los Angeles for the second game away from home. Now uh, we'll get into the lineup for this first game. Uh, it's only two days after the cup game, but I did rest the players after that. So they're in pretty good condition, uh, but obviously they didn't really train. So a bit of a risk that you, you sort of take trying to rest the players. Anyway, starting lineup is going to be Derek in goals, all of Sunday at right back, Bessler and Bubikar as the two center halves with Gaza at left back. Center mid is going to be Mueller. Bit of an interesting, uh, you know, positional change for him. He's going to be playing center mid as Zelalem is currently injured uh, alongside Ronaldo there. I'm going to go with Cisneros. He's not 100% fit. He's 87% match condition and only 50% uh, match fitness. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a risk, but he is, you know, that good of a player. On the other wing, we're going to go with Pellegrini. And then up front, we're going to go with Kane and Chen. Basically, we haven't been scoring goals. Chen, the goals have dried up from him. Hoping he can sort of turn it back around and start scoring some more. But yeah, Keane as well is also falling off. So looking for looking for some decent performances out of those two for sure today. And I think we, we've got a pretty... We've, I would say we've got a full strength team. I would actually kind of rate Mueller a little bit better than... Zelalem in the center of midfield. Even though it's not not a natural position, he's accomplished there. But I feel like he's just all round, just a, a little bit more dangerous, I would say. Anyway, Chen's in behind. Lasts it over the top, which has sort of been a pretty consistent thing from him lately. He either is shooting at the goalkeeper or he's blasting it over the top. All right, we've had six shots with zero on target. We do have a highlight now, though. Gaza loses the ball. Oh, story of this bad run of form. Just losing the ball, and we get counterattacked so easily because, I mean, we're playing a 4-4-2, so there's no sort of defensive midfielder sitting in the hole in front of the, the two center backs. Anyway, Keane... Mueller, I mean, can't even get a shot on target. And now they're in behind. This is what I'm talking about. The counter-attack, we're so susceptible to it. And it's almost making me want to change the tactic a little bit. In exactly what way, I don't know. But it's uh, it's going to, yeah, it's probably going to be a possibility if this if we can't break this run of form. I feel like I'm going to have to... Come on, Chen, please, please. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. He was scoring those. He was scoring those early in the season. I mean, we are dominating. Pellegrini. Bad cross. Abubakar. That's the end of the highlight there. I mean, we are dominating. And, you know, typical FM fashion, we're probably going to concede. And we do. Their first, second shot, first shot on target, and we concede from a free kick. I mean, it's it's just been the story of the last, what, five MLS games. I'll try and encourage them, but... Yeah, it's kind of demoralizing, honestly, losing five MLS games in a row. Come on, Gaza. Still can't do anything. Besla, Gaza again. Chen, oh my god, please. I just need a goal to go in from one of our strikers. Come on, Chen. How does he, oh, how does he not score that? He's gone from hero to villain. He's on a 6.3 as well. We don't have a backup striker as well. I forgot to mention that. I didn't actually go over the bench, but uh, yeah, the other striker, the Argentinian, has gone out to the French Youth Invitational, the under-20 
tournament. And, uh, yeah. We're, we're a little bit stuck at the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Aguila on for Chen. I'm going to swap Kane and Aguila, and then we're going to bring Mueller and put him up top. Come on, Mueller. Please. Oh, that's a good save. This is Neros. Oh my god, how did he not score that goal? We we're so unlucky. So unlucky. Come on, Mueller. Running away from the goal. Nice little back heel, but we give the ball away again. So frustrating. Pellegrini, get in there, please. He's offside. No! Oh. That's, that's brutal. Like, I am actually getting FM'd here. We do not deserve to be losing this game right now. Come on, Pellegrini's win. He wins the ball back. Oh, but it's a weak shot. It's a weak shot. That's disgusting. That's that's really really frustrating. Exactly what I'm exactly what I'm talking about with this run of form. As you can tell, I'm pretty pretty pissed off. And there we go. Keane is in a in a bit of a goal drought. Nine hours of football without a goal. Okay, well we've got seven days to go through until the LA Galaxy game. So I'll join you back for the lineup for that one. All right, so let's get into the lineup. Just before we do that, we have actually made a transfer and we basically have gotten a player from the LA Galaxy. Now what's happened? Might not actually be there. Let's see. They have waved. It doesn't show it there. Um, Free transfers? No. Just curious. Yeah, so here we go. Basically, LA Galaxy, they released this player, or they changed their squad registration. So Justin Salazar is an 18-year-old central midfielder come through the LA Galaxy Academy. However, he's been released by them, and he went through a thing, a process called waivers, which is when a player is released. All the other clubs in the MLS have a chance to pick him up for free. And we did that. So we joined the, it's like a mini, it's like a bit of a lottery. Um, each team has a specific value in the waiver list. And we were actually first. So we got to sign him straight away. He's got a little bit of potential. He's uh, currently better than both of our, both of our backup center mids in, uh, what are their names? Acosta and Aguila. He's better than both of them at the moment. He's also got a little bit of potential, as you can see there. So he could develop nicely. Um, I've actually given him a new contract uh, because we actually had to release a player as well through the waivers. Um, but yeah, we don't really need to talk about that. It was a, a bit of a nothing player. One of the players that actually start, started at the club before I took over. So yeah, there's that. Uh, let's get into the lineup. I think it's, it's it's actually the exact same lineup. We're gonna we're gonna go with it. Um, and on the bench, we're gonna bring Salazar onto the bench there, uh, as well as Tolo. Delalem still not back from his injury. He's still recovering, uh, but hopefully he'll be back for the next game, perhaps. Probably not actually. Um, but I think we'll try and I think we'll start Salazar, um, in that cup game. Anyway, it'll be off camera. So yeah, let's get into it. Of course, LA Galaxy, I mentioned it earlier in the episode, is, of course, David Beckham's former team that he did play with when, he's, when he was actually in the MLS. And, of course, the contract that he had with them 
is essentially the reason as to how he was allowed to create his own franchise in the in the MLS uh, at a reduced sort sort of rate. I'm pretty sure MLS franchises or clubs, we'll call them clubs, uh, they start at like two hundred million US dollars or something like that, and I think he got his for about twenty five million. So pretty crazy. Obviously, he is backed by a Bolivian billionaire as well. Um, who essentially owns the club. I'm pretty sure he's the majority the majority owner, whereas Beckham and a few other people are sort of in the, minor, in the minority, but still own, you know, a certain percentage of the club themselves. Anyway, Galaxy are coming forward here, and they've scored the opening goal. Christian Pavon, I believe he's on loan from Boca Juniors, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it's Boca Juniors. And obviously check, but yeah. Yeah, not great defending there. Daza let his man go. I mean, it was essentially... It essentially went in the goal from the cross. Hit the post. Right on the edge. And uh, it was an easy, easy tap in there. The Pavon. The real question is, what can we do? Can we bounce back? Pellegrini... What was that? What was that by Pellegrini? This bad run of form is continuing, although Chen, he scores. That's what we needed. That's his first goal since I mentioned how good he was in the in the previous episode. And he's got us the equaliser. That's massive. That really is massive. And I mean, it was a stroke of luck as well. But he finished it like he like he was finishing before this horrible run of form. And we're back in it. One all. And it looks like we're actually coming forward again here. We've got a free kick. Will be Gaza. And he goes for the goal. And he scores. Wow. I thought he was going to cross that in. But he's he's been real cheeky there. And I mean, so far, so good. We're, we're back in the... Well, we're in the lead. I mean, it, f it feels like forever ago. Since we actually led a game. But there we go. 2-1. Gaza, it's also his first goal for the club as well. So a happy sort of moment for him there. Chen's in behind. Can't finish. Pellegrini. Keen. Oh my god. He's got to score that goal. Oh my god. He's had nine hours with no goals. And then he misses an absolute sitter. If we can see before half time, I'm going to lose my mind. Come on, Chen. He shoots. That's a good save by the keeper, though. Probably, probably a little bit too far out, I would say. Anyway, Bessler to Keane. Bessler. Keane again. Long cross out to Pellegrini. He crosses it into the box. Cleared away. Mueller. Ooh, that was close. I mean, both teams not really playing too well. We've just been, I guess, the... The luckier, the more lucky side of the two. As you can see, all the Sunday on a 6.4. Abubakar, 6.5. I mean, Ibrahimovic on a 6.2 for LA. LA Galaxy. Anyway, Mueller here. Decent cross to no one. Ronaldo, he hasn't really played too well since we brought him in on loan. Um, I am actually in the process of signing two other central midfielders. And I think that's a penalty. God damn it, Bessler. Ibrahimovic with the penalty. He's going to score it. He has to score it. There we go. Two all. And they're back in it. And I mean, Ibra's been pretty bad today for them. I was kind of just hoping that he might actually miss it because he has performed so badly. Anyway, the onus is on us to, to come out and win, get the lead again. Come on, Pellegrini. Gets past his man, Ronaldo. Hits the post. Oh, come on. We need some luck. We really need some luck.
corner. Ronaldo again. Needs to find someone. He loses the ball. Uh, but that is a free kick to us. Is it Gaza? Mueller this time. And that's not, not good enough. Alright, I'm going to make a sub. We're going to take Sunday off. I mean, I kind of want to take a Bubicar off for Parkhurst, but Parkhurst is dreadful. Um, what we can do, let's do this. Now, this is a little bit risky, but Salazar for Abubakar, and then we're going to put Ronaldo in at center back. He can play there pretty well, and he is more defensive minded than attacking minded in regards to being a midfielder. It's a risk. Ooh, they've just missed that shot there, luckily for us. All right, I'm going to push the boys forward. Actually, we'll, we'll see this highlight out. I want to see what happens. If we manage to get get a goal here, I don't think I want to push him forward. Anyway, Brandon By down this right-hand side. Beats his man, kind of. And Salazar, on debut, from LA Galaxy, literally a couple of days before this, has scored to take the lead for Inter Miami. What has just happened? That is ridiculous. Look at him, he's cheering. Oh that if you were if you were a Galaxy fan in that stadium, you would be livid. Absolutely livid. On debut for us as well. Off the bench. I mean I guess that, that's a bit of a master stroke by me. Unless we can see it here. And it looks like there's there's a strong possibility. Oh, good save by Derek. We've got 10 minutes left. I'm very nervous. Oh, Derek's missed the ball completely. Oh my god. It's going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> that was so bad. Alright, we're going to make another sub here. We're going to bring... I don't know who we're going to bring on. Um... Yeah, okay. We'll bring Acosta on for Cisneros, and then Mueller can go out on the right wing, and Acosta can come inside into midfield. Can we please score again? That would be absolutely delightful. Cisneros is going to lose the ball there, yeah. He waited way too long. Ronaldo, though, coming up with a, a decent interception there. Now, that really could be an option. I think I would rather play Ronaldo at centre-back than ever... Play Parkhurst again. Chen in behind. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Can't score. I mean, he has scored today. Thank God. But a second there for him would have been brilliant for us. And I mean, Derek. Big, big game for him. 7.4. Pellegrini has got acres of space in front of him. Still going. Into the box. And that's a wild shot. Probably should have tried to pick out Chen. But it does look like we're about to win this game. There's what, 40 seconds left? I've gone for a bit of a... Oh, pick the ball up. Oh, that type of highlight really, really makes me nervous. Come on, Bessler. Get rid of the ball. Do not play with it right now. And there we go. Ronaldo absolutely pumps it down the field. Out for a... F there we go. Full time. 3-2 victory. Our first MLS win in six games. We've had six losses in a row. And somehow, well, thanks to Salazar, the new signing. What an incredible signing. And there we go, Chen ends his goal drought. How long? Eight matches without a goal. And there we go, Salazar gets one over on LA Galaxy. 
Oh, that is that is an interesting that that that's a really really crazy sort of scenario or situation that has played out there. Greg Garza, man of the match as well, scoring that goal from the free kick, and uh, yeah, I mean that win puts us up a little bit, but as you can see, we've we've got a lot of ground to cover if we're going to try and advance higher up the the playoff spots. Um, but luckily, with that win, we've sort of kept a little bit of a gap between ourselves and some of those other teams that were, were chasing us. So that's great. All we need to do now is continue to win. And uh, as you can see, we've got some tough games coming up. That Toronto game is going to be huge. Huge. I mean, if they if they take three points off us, we could well fall out of the playoff spots. So hoping the form has turned around. Anyway, guys, if you could drop a like on the video, smash the like button, please. Show me your support. FM20 is here. I'm enjoying it. This form is driving me crazy, though. It has driven me crazy. Anyways, also subscribe to the channel if you're new. And apart from that, take it easy and goodbye.